Good morning got a potential collab we can do together if you are interested. Absolutely, what do you have in mind? Just got this email. My 26-foot Pearson sailboat sank at my dock, about 12 feet of water, and need to be back on top of the water. The cause of the sinking is unknown. There are only two through holes on this boat so it's my guess is a hose from one of these sprung a leak. The boat weighs 5,600 pounds according to the spec sheet. I know you do this for a living. We don't. So it could be a cool video to record together. Where you are teaching us how to do this and actually do it for real. Sounds like a plan. Where is the sailboat located? This is in Lake Lanier, Georgia. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now you guys get to see us do a lot of salvage work here on our channel. We lift up boats, we lift up cars, we do all different types of salvage work. Um, and we get to travel all over to do it as well. Not just in our local area, we get to travel out of state. And that's what we're actually doing today. We're headed down to Georgia right now. We got a call for a sailboat. It's not very deep, it's only about 12 foot deep. Um, but it is off the end of a gentleman's dock and it's sitting at a 45 degree angle. And in today's video, I'm gonna kind of talk about some of the behind the scenes stuff that we do before we accept a job. I'm gonna be talking about some of the questions that we ask so that we can be properly prepared before we ever get to a, a dive site um, to know how much lift we've got to have and how we're going to position this boat and stabilize the vessel and all that. Um, I am short a man today. I've got four crew members count myself going down to do this lift. So we've had to call in the big guns to help us with it. But I've got a special guest that's going to come in and hopefully he's going to have the right amount of lift for us to help get this vessel up. But like I said, I want you guys to learn from this video because I'm going to show you how we set up the equipment that we use for it and why we want to try to stabilize this vessel on the way up and talk about the lifting process as well. And I'll even show you the math of how we calculate to see how much lift we need to do a job like this. But we got about an hour uh, right ahead of us. We've been on the road for about three hours now, but we've got about another hour to go. And then uh, we'll jump in and see if we can salvage this elbow. So let's jump right into today's video, guys. We are preparing here basically what you're seeing us do this is the day before we went down to do this job and we are just preparing all of our equipment make sure that it's all in good working order and i can't i can't talk enough about being properly prepared to do a job like this especially when you're driving a, a good distance we had to drive four hours just to get to this dive site um, to recover this boat so we want to make sure all of our equipment is working properly and you're going to see here shortly we did have some equipment malfunctions throughout this recovery, so or th throughout this salvage. 
But now that we're at the dive site, we're going to go down and we are going to do a uh, just an inspection of the vessel. We're going to try to find out uh, the position of it and you know what attachment points we've got. And that's typically what we do during the inspection. We want to see how the vessel's laying in the water and see how deep it is um, and see what attachment points. Typically, we look for uh, bow eyes or stern eyes on both the front and the rear of the vessel. We also look to see um, if there's any attachment points underneath uh, because ideally we want to get all our lift up underneath the vessel um, so that we have a good stable platform to work with but as we're going around now we are actually uh, gonna start on the stern itself here and just go around there you can kind of see the transom but we're just gonna go around uh, look to see if there's a place that we could attach a bag right now we're not seeing any stern eyes whatsoever there are some bars and stuff here on the back but that's actually a ladder it's not gonna be a, a good stable system to attach something to our lift bags would literally just rip that ladder clean off um, but now that we see that there's nothing on the rear of course we can go around to the front and on our way to the front we're actually going to stop around the um, around midship area and look at the keel and there's two things that we want to look for one is it a uh, permanent keel or is it one that kind of rolls up and down um, in this particular situation this sailboat actually has a permanent keel we can't roll it up and down which is going to give us something good and steady to wrap our straps around because typically with a sailboat we create a cradle underneath the vessel uh, to attach bags to but the good thing about this keel is it's going to allow us to do that we're not going to have to worry about that keel breaking off or anything like that and you can see that and with this vessel being at a 45 degree angle you can see we've got plenty of access to get straps and stuff around it however since it is at a 45 degree access we're not going to be able to get our straps completely under the in this case the port side of the vessel so we're going to have to figure out a way to lift this vessel temporarily or to get it in the upright position just so that we can run our straps and this is where the the first dangerous part of this dive is going to come into play because after we get this vessel kind of stabilized we're going to have to send a man underneath this vessel to run that strap through so as you can see there's not much room under there whatsoever it is completely on the bottom and once we start uh, doing our rigging for this vessel you'll see it it pretty much goes pitch black but um, now that we know we don't have any attachment points on the rear, we don't have any attachment points on the front, all, the only thing that we can do is create a cradle system uh, once we've stabilized this vessel and then, of course, put our bags to the cradle system and lift it up. We can go ahead and start uh, preparing for the uh, the lift itself. Now, to do that, we're going to come up. We're going to have a conversation with our surface crew here, and we're just kind of explain what we've got, what you know, what our suggestions are, and we're going to get our game plan out. And we're right now, what you're seeing on film is we're trying to decide which straps are going to be uh, the best for us, um, and. This first part of this lift, you're, you're going to kind of think I'm a little crazy here, but we're actually going to put a lift bag on the mast itself, and we're not trying to lift the vessel. We're trying to straighten the vessel. So I want to get it on that level plane so that basically the keel is down in the mud, but the whole of the vessel is up above the mud, and that's going to give us some room to get down in there and, and to uh, cradle a system together. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go down to uh, the center of the deck here to where the mast is sticking straight up out of the water or where the mast is attached to the vessel. And I'm creating just a loop system out of some strapping here. And then we're going to hook uh, basically a 1,000 pound bag. Now this is in no way, shape, or form going to lift this vessel. But what it will do is help straighten that vessel up. And then once we've got it straightened up, once it's a the bag is attached and put air in it then of course we can stabilize it by tying it off to the dock and what that allows us to do is put it into a position where it can't roll forward can't roll backwards and it's going to be safe for one of us to swim a strap system up underneath it now a lot of times when we do this instead of actually putting a diver completely under the vessel itself we will run it either from the bow to midship or from the stern to midship and we'll just put two divers one on each side and then kind of swim that strap up along in there and we could have done that on this system um, the only issue we had is you'll see here shortly when we go to rig our other bags 
the cradle system that we had, the, the straps themselves were actually anchored together. So there was no way that we could anchor on both sides by swimming them up in there and lining them up. Let alone the fact we were dealing with, here shortly you're going to see zero visibility. But now that we've got that first strap on, we're going to go down, hook up this 1,000 pound bag. And this is usually a two man job. One man has to go down with the bag, one man has to kind of stay up the top and bleed the bag off as, as we pull it down. So it does take at least two people to typically do this. But now that I've got the bag down, I'm going to go ahead and attach the anchor shackle. That's the part that connects the bag to the strapping. You can see I'm just putting the bolt in there. That's going to kind of lock it into place. And I have this strap wrapped around the base of the mast to the point where the strap itself is going to pull up on the mast a little bit, but not enough that it breaks it away from the fiberglass or anything like that. All it's going to do is just basically stabilize this vessel. And you'll see once we have that bag inflated, you'll kind of see that boat kind of rock back in that horizontal position, the position it should actually be in when it's in the water. And then, of course, you'll see we have a rope attached to the top of the mast that as that vessel starts to correct itself in the correct position we're going to secure that rope over to the dock and what that does is secure the vessel so that one of us can actually swim these straps up underneath the vessel itself um I don't know if you really caught it, but the diver, you're actually seeing it from my point of view now. That diver over to the left is actually our spe special guest star for today, and that's Mr. Uh, Woody from Dive Talk. I'm sure you guys, if you're subscribers of us, I'm sure you subscribe to Gus and Woody over at Dive Talk. Uh, they're actually the ones that turned us on to this job today and, and got us down in Georgia to do it, and they wanted to learn a little bit about salvage work, so we're actually teaching Woody. Uh, unfortunately, Gus wasn't able to be with us that day, but but um, we were hoping to, the next morning from this, we were hoping to sit down and kind of do a reaction for you guys. I know they're planning on doing one as well, but um, unfortunately, times just didn't work out for us. But uh, Woody, it, it was a blessing having Woody there as an extra man in the water, uh, especially when you see me go down here shortly and we run these straps under. It was nice having that extra diver there that you know could pull me out in the event something happened. But here we're just, once again, we're getting our game plan. We're making sure every diver knows exactly what his job is. Now, I do want you to pay attention to that mast right there. If that mast was standing straight up and down, which ideally is what we want, then the problem with that is, is when I go to swim the strap up underneath it, it could teeter tot one way or the other and actually land on me. And I didn't actually want that. I wanted a little bit of uh, pressure still pulling on that vessel from the surface. So yes, the, the vessel is up. It's up enough that it's resting on the keel and we can get completely under that vessel. But it's also um, got tension from the surface or from the top of the mask over to the dock. And what that allows for is there's enough tension that it's going to be raised up on the starboard side, but yet it's still up enough that it's going to be raised up on the port side. And there's really no risk of that vessel rolling um, while we're going down to put these straps under. Now you're going to see it from the other diver's view once again. Um, he's going to start by uh, shoving these straps completely up under the vessel, and then I'm going to come in from the other side swim under grab those straps and pull them through and kind of anchor them together uh, once we've got them anchored together then of course we can hook our bags and I'll try to show you what that looks like real quick I'll draw it out for you basically we are going to put uh, two 2,000 pound bags that's gonna be 4,000 pounds of lift initially just to get this vessel up once it's up then we can and make sure that it's stabilized then of course we're gonna add two two more 2,000 pound bags and kind of pick it up enough that we can pump it out. But here you're seeing it, uh, the straps are, are being pushed under, and of course I've swim up, you can kind of see my bubbles coming out from there, I've swim up underneath to grab those uh, straps and pull them over to my side. Uh, and like I said, once we touch the bottom here, our visibility literally goes to zero. So we are truly working in the blind here. Uh, and sometimes we just got to take it slow. This is not a really fast um, thing that we do. We take our time. We make sure that we're safe. We make sure the vessel's stable. And we, we want to make sure that those straps, and as you're going to see here shortly, we actually make a mistake with the straps. But we want to make sure that the straps are not going to move around because the last thing that we want is for that vessel to come up and then completely capsize upside down or to roll over sideways or anything like that. There's so many different environmental considerations that you got to take in. One, we are on an active lake, so there are boats coming by. Um, just to be on the safe side, we did throw a dive flag out there. Obviously, that is by law. Um, but 
we want to make sure that as boats come by, as waves start to splash, that it's not a, really affecting us in any way. Now, you are going to see that everything I just said does not actually apply because we had several boats come by and you're going to see the waves in the, in the lake actually kick up and mess up our rigging. What actually happened on this, as we start to lift, that rigging actually slipped out from where it was at and it allowed both of our bags to slide around to one side. So as this vessel starts started coming up unfortunately what happened was is that vessel rolled rolled basically completely on its starboard side and we had to you know get a game plan ahead of us and figure out how we're going to fix this issue because we didn't really want to lose the lift that we had but unfortunately due to the environmental conditions there you can kind of see a boat came by waves hit we let the strap go up top and of course the vessel rolled you can see how we've kind of got the bags rigged. It looks like they're at the surface because they are, but in all reality, they're up underneath that vessel. And that's where we need that lift. We need that lift to pick that vessel up so that the gunnels are going to be out of the water and we can start pumping. Um, we also had an issue with our compressor there. Our main compressor actually went down and we had to get a backup compressor to continue doing what we were doing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward a little bit for you guys because it's just a bunch more rigging here. But basically we're letting the air out of the bags on, on this particular side. Um, and we're going to start over from scratch. We're going to get that vessel stabilized again, get it in that horizontal position, get the bags replaced. And then we're we're going to lift it up. Now that we've got the boat completely up out of the water and the gunnels are out of the water, we can start with the pumping process. Now the pumping process, depending on which size pump we use, sometimes is the hardest part because it's just a lot of hurry up and waiting. In this case, we had a three inch pump and a one inch pump going, so we were pumping some water very, very quickly out of here. Um, and of course we got, we were very successful. We got the vessel up, everybody was safe. We had absolutely zero damage done to this vessel during the lifting process, which we couldn't have asked for a, a better lift itself. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you what made this vessel sink because that's another thing that we try to concern ourselves with. When you look down this little storage area here, you'll notice a hose just pumping water out. And basically he had a ruptured hose there that was taking on water and that's exactly what made this vessel sink. Um, the good news is we're pumping water out faster than what that water is coming in and he was actually able to fix that hose so that once we left that vessel would float on its own but once he got that fixed once we got our pumps out of there he was happy we were happy and of course all he's got to do now is just clean up his vessel throw a motor back on it and he's good to go Guys, I want to go over lift theory real quick with you and show you just how easily this is done, but I want to talk about why it's not necessarily an exact science because of when we lift something out of the water, especially when we're talking about Archimedes principle. Typically Archimedes principle is only going to get that object neutrally buoyant and it doesn't really take into effect how much the object is going to weigh at the surface itself and at the surface meaning completely out of the water not floating in the water so let's look at archimedes principle real quick and lift theory basically there's two things that we deal with fresh water and salt water and you probably remember this from your open water course but fresh water comes in at 62.4 pounds per cubic foot and salt water weighs about 64 pounds per cubic foot so to do a lift there's really only two things that you need to know you need to know the weight of an object and you also need to know how much cubic footage or the estimated cubic footage that object displaces in the water. So just for an example, let's say I've got a 200 pound object and it displaces two cubic feet of fresh water. I'm going to start with this bottom number first. Since I'm dealing with fresh water, I'm going to take 62.4 times it by two and it says the natural buoyancy, if you will, of that vessel is 124 pounds. Then all I've got to do is take the actual weight of the vessel or the object in this case, which is 200 pounds and subtract the 124 for it. And to make this object neutrally buoyant, I only need 76 pounds of lift because Archimedes principle basically says any object placed in a body of water is automatically going to be lifted up by the equal amount of weight that that water displaces. And since it displaces two cubic foot, that 200 pound object only needs 76 pounds of 
lift to make it neutrally buoyant in the water. Now with a vessel, it's just a it's basically the same principle, but there's a couple of things to consider. And basically here, I showed you this earlier in the video. This is the sailboat here that we were raising, and you can see the placement of those bags. Now the top of the sailboat here, that is not actually the top of the water. The top of the water is gonna be at the top of these bags because there is certain amount of draft that that vessel is gonna have in the water. And we've gotta make sure that we get that vessel high enough so that these gunnels are above that draft line because if we just raise the vessel to where the water line is here at the surface, then it's still not going to be able to be pumped out and float on its own. So we've got to get that lift. Instead of putting the lift at the top of the gunnel area, whether it's the bow or the stern, we need that lift up underneath the vessel. And so basically what we've done is in the video, we took a 2,000 pound and put it as low on the hull as we could, both front and behind that uh, keel area. And then we did the exact same thing on the other side. So that gave us that 8,000 pounds of lift to get that vessel up. Now, ideally we try to put a 1,000 on both the bow and the stern just for stabilization processes. But as you can see in this video, unfortunately we did not have any attachment points back here on the stern, nor did we have any attachment points on the bow itself. So for basic stabilization to be able to get the straps up underneath this vessel, we took a 1,000 and we strapped it to the mast itself just to hold it upright in that horizontal position where it needed to be so that we could run our strapping and everything up underneath the vessel just like that. Guys, I don't know if you can hear me. Don't know how good the audio is going to be on this. But I hope you understand the realities of salvage work and what we have to go through. As you can see, it was pitch black under there. I'm just going to show you some of the equipment real quick. First of all, we did get the sailboat floating, so it's up, it's pumping out. We're getting the last little bit of water out of the cabin area now, and it'll be 100% on its own. Uh, but if you look down here on the dock, if I walk you down there, you're not going to be able to hear much. We've got a compressor unit. we actually got a backup compressor unit up here. We've got a uh, water pump right there. We've got another small water pump that's actually inside somewhere back there. You can just see it. And hopefully you can hear me. Like I said, the wind's really bad. What did we use down there on the dock? Our two 1,000 pound bags. We've got four 2,000 pound bags that we do that we use. So right now we've got about 10,000 pounds of lift. And in all honesty, it took all 10,000 pounds of lift to get this vessel up today. Uh, it was crazy. We had a lot of struggles. We had one compressor unit that completely went down on us. We had to use a backup compressor, but we got it up. This is the realities to salvage work, especially when you're dealing with zero vis and conditions like we were having. It's, it's a struggle sometimes, it really is. I want to give a huge, huge shout out to Woody and Gus over at Dive Talk. Those guys turned us on to this job. We was able to come down here to Georgia and successfully complete it. Woody, buddy, thanks for all your help. God, man, we couldn't have done it without you. I'm telling you, that peak SMB, that was the last bit of lift that we needed to pop it up. But in all seriousness, guys, thank you, Woody, again for all your help. You were a huge help, especially with me climbing up underneath that sailboat, just knowing that I had you there looking after me. You could pull me out in an emergency. You're a lifesaver, brother, and I really, truly appreciate it. But guys, make sure you go check out Dive Talk's video. They're going to do kind of a reaction video to what went on today and how we do this. So definitely go check them out. I guarantee you, if you're a subscriber of ours, you're going to be a subscriber of them, too. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was kind of short as far as what you saw underwater because we couldn't see underwater, neither could our cameras, and more than likely, you're not going to see underwater, neither. Because I hope you liked the video. Give me a th big thumbs up. If you got any questions on salvage work, things like we do in our videos, drop me a comment down below. I'll try to answer it the best I can. But guys, I'm going to get geared down real quick, help these guys get loaded up. We've got about a four-hour ride back to North Carolina, and then it's back to work every single day. So, guys, I really appreciate you watching the video. If you didn't like it, big thumbs up. Definitely share it. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Leave us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.